All right, I wanted to take a minute to just show how to um, look at some of the data as it's streaming into your station. And I'm starting here on the station view page. And this is uh, showing all of the stations that are currently online in this area. And um, I'll go over here to uh, um, Eastern UP ISD station. And I'm gonna first just click on this. And it brings up um, a little window on the side here, which has the, the data, actually shows the data streaming in. And we can click on this link and open that in a new tab. Oh, I have to change my sharing, I think. Oh, should be okay. Okay, so uh, this is just um, the default view that comes up. So what we're looking at is um, two panels. This top panel is showing the ground motion, how much it went up and down over the last, uh, I guess, about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, no, it's more like 20 minutes. And you can adjust that time. Um, and so if you were in the room or close to this station and you jump up and down on the ground, you'd see a big spike. Um, and that would come in on this side. So this is the newest data coming in on the side over here. Okay. Um, on the bottom is showing the same in data, but it's plotted in a different way. So you can see over here, this is frequency in Hertz. And so what it's doing is it's it's taking the, the data that's plotted up here, which is just um, wiggles up and down and um, broken it up into little pieces. And then, and so for each small chunk of time, it's calculated the frequency content in that window. And so here, um, the windows are small enough and they overlap. And so you can't see, you can't distinguish between them very well at this scale, but you can see um, the overall pattern, which is that there are these sort of streaks uh, in the data. Okay, um, and I should say also that these brightest colors indicate those places in the data where um, a lot of the signal is at that frequency. And then the darkest areas are areas where there's not much signal at those frequencies. So usually when you see these kinds of things, these long streaks like this, that's mostly not natural. That's mostly coming from some kind of vibration in a building, maybe related to, um, well, very often related to like the heating and air conditioning system. And so those can, uh, you'll see, might see some variations as those come on and, and turn, turn off. Um, but if there were an earthquake, we would see um, a kind of a rich, a broad range of frequencies being represented by that earthquake. And, and really the farther away the earthquake is, the lower the frequencies that are represented. And the closer it is, the higher the frequencies that are represented. So that's kind of a um, kind of an interesting thing. Um, okay, so you can play around with this uh, screen by going to this, I guess it's the settings here. Yeah. And so this is the, the setting at the bottom here. This is the setting for the real, so-called real time window. That's what we're looking at. Okay. So it's 120 seconds. So if you wanted to, so what, yeah, that's 20 minutes. So if you wanted to shrink that down and say, well, I just want to look at like the last 10 minutes. Oops. You could do that. Um, and this part, this part describes how you break it up into the little pieces to do the processing for frequency content. I think you can just leave it at two seconds. That's probably fine. All these other things are probably fine. So let's try that. And now it's going to redraw it for just the last 10 minutes. Okay. And of course you can make it much bigger too. So let's just try making it 100 minutes. Okay, so we can see what's happened 
uh, in the last almost two hours. Okay, so that's um, just a quick thing you can you can do with this. And it's very easy to switch back and forth between this view and that helicorder view by going to this 24 hour display. And you'll notice that you've got options in this settings window to adjust that helicorder setting too. So if you don't want full 24 hours, you can change that. Or if you want more, you can do that as well. And then 30 minutes is the a length of time on the bottom. This is kind of interesting. So earlier in the day, there was something happening at pretty much almost exactly 30 hertz, it looks like. And you can see that was really showing up as the main signal here in the data. And it came on um, at about 1017 UTC, which would have been uh, 517 in the morning. Okay, that's it for now.